<laughs> wow, hello once again, everybody. Welcome, it's me, Jacob. Time for another uh, discussion video. Uh, good news, I seem to have fixed the crackling and popping that you all heard consistently throughout the last two discussion videos I've done. Uh, I believe I fixed it anyway. If I didn't fix it, well, y'all will still be hearing it because I'm not recording this twice, so let's go. Behold, I, the <laughs> this video is not about either of the games that I mentioned before. Uh, here's the thing. Um, I play... I like to play games at work. Uh, I could not, in a comfortable fashion, play Psychonauts or Xenoblade Chronicles X at work. I, I The closest I could get was setting up Steam Link on my phone and playing it between calls, but at the same time... That's not ideal. I don't really like doing that, and uh, I'd rather play the game, like, on a bigger screen <clears throat> in a more comfortable way where I'm not being interrupted all the time. I, I want to give Psychonauts that, that luxury and that privilege because it's such a good game. Uh, so instead, I'm going to be talking about Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition, apparently. Uh, I don't tend to play DLCs or games, so I don't know if the, the version of the game... Uh, matters a heck of a lot. But anyway, uh, this is a beat-em-up Metroidvania game originally released in 2013 uh, for the PS3 and the PS Vita. Uh, I didn't realize this until I looked it up earlier today that the, the Vita was one of the first platforms this game was on. Uh, so that's neat. I didn't play it on the Vita. I played it on the Switch like a like a like a civilized man. So yes, this is a beat-em-up Metroidvania. One that I have heard many good things about for years and years. Like, I've heard people, like, really talk this game up for a long time, but I've kind of slept on it until now. Really wish I hadn't. Game's really good. So the, th the whole theme around it is, uh, it's got a, it's got a strong Mexican theme. Uh, you play as Juan, you die, and then you're brought back to life by this, uh, magical luchador mask. Uh, and then you go to get your revenge uh, on the dude who killed you and also uh, kidnapped the president's daughter uh, who uh, you were childhood friends with. Uh, you have you have a crush on who and she has a crush on you and it's adorable. Yeah, you, you, you believe it or not, a game called Guacamelee, you don't really need to worry too much about the story. It's there. Um, Kind of, like, barely. Like, you learn a bit about lore and some of the characters. The characters are really cool, actually. I really like the villains, especially. The first villain that you're, like, really interacting with a lot on a frequent basis uh, is this woman. I don't remember her name, but she's actually pretty funny. Uh, she is, uh, I don't know if she's an ex or if she's just in love with the main bad guy, Kalaka. Uh, Carlos Kalaka is his name. I don't remember the girl's name, though. But she's pretty funny, because she's really jealous of the president's daughter, because Kalaka kidnapped her to marry her, for, or, uh, so that she may be sacrificed for some great evil or whatever. Um, but sh this, this lady has a, uh, is in love with Kalaka, and she's just really jealous and angry the whole time. Uh, that's pretty funny, actually. Um, and, like, there's this other guy who is, like, a, an alcoholic with a flame head... I really like the villains in this game. The sense of humor overall, uh, it mostly hits with the villains. I like the villains a lot. The actual main characters as a whole are okay. Juan, of course, is silent. Uh, you interact with this other girl, uh, Tostada, who is really cool, but she she actually barely shows up. You play as her if, if you play the game co-op, which you can do. I didn't do that, but you can do it. Uh, but the humor, anyway, uh, that's what I was talking about. It's very hit or miss. Like, sometimes it's pretty clever and funny. Uh, other times it is kind of cringy. 2013, when this game came out, internet humor. Uh, the So, I'm, get, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. You, of course, it's, it's a Metroidvania. You get abilities throughout the game. The sideways dash you get is called the Dashing Derp Derp. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh... It never gets to the point where it's, like, loathsomely tiresome. Like, the game is not, like, cram full of jokes. Pretty much all of the dialogue is supposed to be funny, but there's not a lot of dialogue, so it doesn't really get in the way. Uh, and the... 
and the as you pass through towns and stuff, you see like posters and signs that are covered in references, mostly to other video games. Uh, like uh, you, I saw one for Castle Crashers. I saw one that, re that parodies Mario Brothers. Uh, there was one, of course, it's based on masks and internet humor. You gotta have a Strong Bad reference in there, and there was one. Don't you worry, Strong Bad was there. <laughs> so it's a neat little thing. The only thing I wish more, you play as a luchador, you... Uh, where's my wrestling references? <laughs> like, come on, you could have thrown a few of them in there. Like, where's, like, maybe they're in there and I miss them. They are everywhere, and you kind of pass them without much really thought, unless it really catches your eye. But where's my, like, Rey Mysterio mask, or Mil Mascaras, or... Was... Was Pentagon Jr. wrestling around this time? Let me check. You guys don't give a shit, but I'm gonna... Uh, uh, yeah, he made his debut in 2007. Uh, I don't, he wasn't like, I don't know if he was particularly famous back then. Like him, like fucking Ray Phoenix, dude. Where's my Ray Phoenix? Okay, Ray Phoenix was fucking a baby when this game came out. Okay, you get my point. I, I, I like wrestling. Uh, I wish there were more wrestling references in this game. There's really not a lot. It's mostly, again, internet humor and other video game references. Give me, give me, give me my wrestling. Come on. The overall tone is definitely based more around uh, Mexican like Mexican culture and uh, old old style Mexican like folklore and stuff, which is you know that's that's cool. Uh, it seems pretty genuine. It seems like they did their research to the to like a, a layman like me who, believe it or not, I don't know a lot about. Mexican culture and such, but I mean, it, it was cool. I would have liked some more Lucha, Lucha Libre stuff, though. That'd be neat, too. So, as a Metroidvania, uh, of course, you got a big old map you can traverse. It's kind of separated into sections that you can fast travel to and have loading screens between them. Uh, the areas themselves are huge. Uh, so you, it's it's by no means the loading screens by no means get in the way of anything because you're you're going to go like large stretches of the game without running into one. Uh, the game itself, although overall, is actually really linear. I I think I've officially flipped on Metroidvanias. Like I I used to kind of pref like Metroid Fusion for a minute, like a short minute was my favorite Metroid game. Uh, but after replaying Super Metroid, I got a really good uh, appreciation for how that game doesn't really guide you at all as to where to go. And then I played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which really doesn't guide you. The only way you're going to figure out what to do in that game is to look at the map and be like, oh, there is a door I haven't gone in yet because there's a little hole in the wall and I haven't traversed it yet. I'm going to go there next. I really liked that on on, a, on second thought. And now I'm playing Guacamelee, which is a very linear game. I don't know if I ever got lost. Like, it's a Metroidvania in the way that you can backtrack, you can go back to levels, and there are things that you open up with your new abilities. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's fine. Like, that's definitely preferable for some people. I think I've just grown to more appreciate just being fucking lost. You don't get lost in Guacamelee, which to some is like you think, oh, thank Christ, I don't have to worry about like running around in circles for ages. Which, if you're worried about that, if that worries you in Metroidvanias, then you're in luck. You're not gonna you're, like you're not gonna lose your way in this game, which is which is definitely something to to say. And as you're traversing, you're running into enemies, and you are engaging in some of like probably the best side-scrolling beat-em-up combat there is. It's really fun, satisfying, and deep. Uh, well, deep may, may not be the word, but it, it, it I don't think it's too far off either. You have, your, of course, your standard melee attack, uh, and then you have abilities uh, that not only can you use them to progress, but they're all useful in combat as well. They're like a, a sideways dash, an uppercut, a, a like a splash down, stuff like that, a headbutt, and kind of combining all of those uh, into 
fighting enemies. Red rocks, man. And then there's, uh, like, you can only do those special abilities so much because you uh, have a certain amount of stamina, uh, which you can find more of throughout the game. Like, you can, like, it's like heart containers. There are literal, like, basically heart containers. Find three of those, you get more health. Uh, and then there's stamina containers, if you will. Uh, where you find three of those and your you, your stamina increases. And for every increase in stamina, you can use another one of your combat abilities uh, in a row. And then, of course, it refills over time, so you need to kind of pay attention to that. But then again, once you get enough upgrades, which you get pretty frequently, you earn cash and all of that, uh, and at every checkpoint you can access uh, the store where you can buy upgrades and costumes, which change your stats. Later in the game, once you get enough stamina, you barely pay attention. You would really need to spam your combat abilities in order for you to run out of stamina. And even when you do, like, you glow red and then you can just use your standard melee attack for a few seconds before it refills. And it does refill pretty quickly, especially later in the game. So you're really going to be using those attacks a lot. And one thing I fucking love is that... Once you, like, stun people enough, which you can do pretty quickly, you can grab them and throw them into other enemies. I love doing that. I love using enemies as a weapon in any game, and this game does it really well. Like, just chucking dudes and seeing them tumble into everything else all at rocks. It fucking rules. That's basically the combat. I mean, you can also use your abilities, like, in platforming you can like use them to get some extra air time and later you get some ab abilities that allow you to climb up walls and like jump really far off of walls and stuff uh, and using those to tackle the game's occasionally tricky combat challenges is a lot of fun this game i don't think is very hard at all um it's one of those games where you get a like this this isn't a spoiler it's a warning <laughs> Uh, where you get a bad ending if you don't get a certain collectible, uh, like a certain set of collectibles, uh, you get the bad ending, which was annoying. I got that ending at first, but uh, you know what? This game was fun enough that I didn't really mind going back and getting what you need. You need to find six orbs uh, that are hidden pretty, pretty well. Uh, some are pretty well hidden, some aren't uh, throughout the game. And once you get all of those, you get the final one when you beat the final boss, and then you get the good ending when it's all happy and fun. So that's a, that's a bit of a warning to you. Uh, and the ch the challenges that you do in order to get those orbs are really tricky. Like that is like from what I played, that's pretty much the only place where I felt any real resistance. This is not a difficult game. It's an it's it's I mean it's not like a cakewalk. But I did not struggle terribly, and I don't think you would either if you have any, like, experience in Metroidvanias or beat em up games of, of the like. Like, you'll die every now and again. Every now and again, you'll run into an encounter that's kind of tricky, but it's, it's, it's nothing you can't get past. So I mentioned earlier about unlocking different costumes. Uh, this is kind of a nitpick, but... Uh, one thing you can do as well is play as Tostada, the, char the girl character I mentioned earlier, and I believe... As a part of the Super Super Turbo Championship Edition, uh, you can <clears throat> you can play as the villains too, which is, I mean, it sounds fun. The thing is, you're still one, no matter what character you choose. So it's really immersion breaking. Like if I, I at first I was like, oh, I can switch to the girl character. I always want to play as the girl, so I was like, oh, great, I can play as Tostada. Tostada is really cool. And, um, great, I'll play as her. Uh, Tostada herself still shows up in cutscenes, talks to you, calls you Juan, everyone calls you a man. Like, it's essentially, like, you can change characters, but all they are is a skin. And that was annoying. I know Juan is the main character, and I know the story is based around him, but if that's the case, then don't let me play as someone who's not Juan! <laughs> I, it was just uh, disappointing because one one's fine and all he's a silent protagonist it, he's got a cool design he's a big buff beefy boy but I wanted to play as tostada and I really got I got just got tired of playing as her because it was like it was just weird having her show up and talk to herself and call herself one I, I just kind of got over it that's a nitpick I, I but I feel like that's something that's fixed in the sequel 
Uh, there is a sequel. I haven't played it yet. I will down the line for sure. Um, I don't even know if it's actually fixed. It just seems like something that would be fixed in a sequel. Like, oh, you play as different characters and the dialogue uh, cha either changes or the dialogue is never re uh, never references who you're playing to begin with. So I don't know if that's the case. I hope it is. So if I had one complaint about this game, I mostly really enjoyed myself throughout. I don't have a lot to complain about. But if I had one thing to complain about, and I apologize if this makes me sound like an old fogey, but gosh dang it, there's just too many dang buttons. <laughs> uh, it's like, this mostly applies to when you're doing the platforming. Let me give you an idea. Uh, you, you're, fuck, what are the buttons? I never remember the buttons that are on the Switch. I got my Pro Controller. The Y button is your standard melee attack. Okay. Uh, the L button uh, turns you into a chicken. Uh, you get that ability later. It's pretty funny. I like it. Every other button does something integral to your platforming. Like the, like you, there's also this dimension hopping mechanic where you can instantly hop between dimensions and like certain aspects will change. Like some enemies will become attackable. Some uh, platforms will become tangible, etc. Uh, that, that you do with the ZR button. I'm sorry if I said ZL. ZL is your dodge. Uh, B is your jump, A is your combat moves, which you can use to uh, traverse, and then X it normally in combat is your grab, but when you're platforming, that's the that's what you use later when you get to the ability to run up walls or jump across walls and stuff. There, it, it's just once once you get to those trickier platforming segments, it gets so disorienting, and you will constantly be pressing the wrong button. I say you, maybe it's just a me thing, but it was annoying. I, it, it's something that happened to me quite a bit once I got to like the challenges to get those orbs, was I was just like, like it asks a lot of you and it's very easy to get your fingers tied in a knot trying to figure out what button you're supposed to press next. You could figure it out. It's mostly just a, a mental thing. It's not like you forget what button does what, or some buttons don't do what they're supposed to. It's just that so many buttons are so integral that you're going to get mixed up every now and again. So that's a little irritating. That's pretty much all I've got for Guacamelee. Uh, this game is a ton of fun. It goes on sale really frequently, at least on the Switch. I'm sure it goes on sale on Steam and stuff as well all the time. It's an older game, so I'm like, it's not like they're going <laughs> to, it's not like they're going to keep the price up for terribly long for that. It's very worth it. Grab it on whatever you can. Uh, it's a it's a fun little game. Uh, it in, Including getting all the orbs so I can get the good ending. It took me just under 10 hours to beat it, so it's a decent length. And of course, there is the additional exploration if you want to do that to find all of the treasure chests and stuff. And uh, there's some like optional challenges that you can do as well that are pretty fun. And if you want to do all of that, that will tack on another few hours. It's a good time. If you like Metroidvanias and beating the shit out of dudes as a big buff Mexican wrestler, yeah, Guacamelee's great. I highly recommend it. Good fun. Uh, so that's that. That's that for Guacamelee. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, what am I going to do next? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of playing Shantae's Ris uh, Shantae Risky's Revenge, um, since that's a little short game that'll tie me over until Metroid Dread comes out. And then I'll play Metroid Dread, and I will die. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it looks great. Uh, and you can probably expect an impressions video on Metroid Dread as well, uh, once I finish that. Uh, so with that, goodbye everybody. Have a good day. Guacamole is disgusting. But I'm glad it didn't impede me from playing Guacamole. Bye!